other Florida quarterback news. We head from uh, Tampa Bay to Jacksonville. The Patriots traded Mac Jones to the Jaguars for a sixth round pick yesterday. Uh, what do we make of Mac Jones after his career at Alabama going to New England and what this all means for the Patriots? Peter come full circle with the number three overall pick. Yeah, it's interesting because Mac Jones obviously was a pro bowler his rookie year <laughs> and took his team to the playoffs his rookie Peter, year. I remember him being in the pro bowl, gritty, gritty. in the end zone. It was like a star is born. Like, yeah. Yeah. Back, up in, Jacksonville. back up in Jacksonville. Back up in Jacksonville. Traded for a sixth round pick. To Jacksonville. That's the value of Mac Jones, a sixth oh. round pick. And it was almost one of these deals which was like New England just wanted to just rid themselves mm -hmm. of Mac. And I look at all the different things that he was dealt with, and I'm talking coaching change, obviously oh. at the offensive coordinator position, but so many different pieces and parts to that offense, different receivers every year. <laughs> Did Mac ever have a chance to succeed? Uh, that first year, he was good. And then it was just broken. And you could say, well, his personality didn't fit with Belichick. Belichick's gone. Like, do you want to try maybe with these new guys? I don't know. Um, the truth of the matter is they have a number three overall pick. They're going quarterback. It's obvious now to me that this is the move. There was some talk early on, like, and I think, uh, Jason, I think you even said it. Like, do you maybe draft Harrison and give him a shot? And just as a thought, like, you know, the yeah. third overall pick. And a lot of people said it. No, this is, this is them telling the market, we're going quarterback, and that quarterback's either going to be Drake May or that quarterback's going to be Jaden Daniels, as we assume Caleb Williams mm -hmm. is going to go first. And now they can invest their time into figuring it out. Um, Mac, what a weird period of New England Patriots football because, remember, the bridge quarterback was Cam Newton. Yep. He played a year. And then they were like, we're going to have Cam and Mac. And Mac, as a rookie, was so good in training camp that he beat out Cam Newton, and they just got rid of Cam Newton, pushed him to the side. I, I can't believe like that's how it goes. And now as a 15th overall pick who was a pro bowler as a rookie, before his rookie deal is even close to done, Mac Jones is traded for a bag of footballs and a ham sandwich to the Jacksonville Jaguars where he'll be a backup to another guy from his draft class. Sad ending, mm. and I can't say it's a great ending for Mac Jones. I don't think he's going to beat out Trevor Lawrence for the job. And I look at Russell Wilson's getting a shot to fight Kenny Pickett for a gig. Like, Mac Jones couldn't beat out Kenny Pickett. I don't know. Maybe everyone else in the world knows more than I do. Sixth round pick, it seems like that was literally 30 cents, 20 cents on the dollar. It seems like very low got, get back for what Mac Jones could be for a team. To your point, it's only two years removed from that Pro Bowl season. A lot of coaches changing in between that. But I look at this for Mac Jones as a good opportunity because you look at it, you get drafted to a team that has a defensive-minded head coach in Bill Belichick. You have McDaniels as your OC. You have a terrific year as a rookie. Then from that point on, you get Bill O'Brien after the third year. But then in between that, you have Matt Patricia and Joe Judge. So for Mac Jones, you're going to Jacksonville where Doug Peterson is the head coach, an offensive-minded guy, and he gets a chance to go learn in that system with no pressure. <laughs> Nobody in Jacksonville and Duval is looking for Mac Jones to come in and save the day. It's Trevor Lawrence's team. He can be a backup, learn football, and we're watching Gardner Minshew have a terrific year this year and all these backup quarterbacks. Trevor Lawrence was banged up a year ago, missed time. Now you get a guy like Mac Jones who possibly, once he learns how to play in this system, could help them and be that backup quarterback that they need. And for Mac Jones, who knows? His fifth-year option is not going to get picked up by Jacksonville. So that means he's going there. He's playing his fourth year. Mm -hmm. He'll be a free agent at the end of the year. Possibly he plays in a game or two. He plays in a preseason. And maybe somebody sees him coming in to compete as a starter. Maybe he returns to Jacksonville. Who knows? But I look at this move for the Patriots, and you mentioned them drafting a quarterback now yeah. with that third overall pick. I think they're also going to bring in a veteran quarterback. Jacoby Brissett is a guy that was in New England. He also was in Cleveland with Van Pelt, the new offensive coordinator. It would make sense to bring in somebody like Jacoby. He's been around Mayo. He knows some of these guys that are already there. He can help be that guy for a young rookie quarterback who maybe a Jaden Daniels or a Drake May is ready to play right away. Maybe they're not. And a guy like Jacoby can get in there. We watched it last year for the commander. Sam Howell was named the quarterback. There were about two games where they were just getting blown out. And they put Jacoby in, and he rattles off three touchdown drives, and next thing you know, they're in a game. This is a guy that's proven, especially the year he went to Cleveland amidst everything that was going on with the Cleveland Browns. He got in there, and he was a leader for that team and at the quarterback position. So the fact that him and Van Pelt have history together, I think Jacoby would be a perfect fit for them. Bring him in, draft a quarterback, throw it overall, and see where they can take this offense. It's a link to back to it's, it's the Belichick era, like the, the Jacoby Brissett is, and the Mac Jones thing, I, I can't sit here and cry for him. It's a tough sport. You know, like you, 
You got drafted in the first round, and we could sit and rattle off coordinator this, coordinator that. I can give you 50 different guys who've had to change coordinators a million times and just have played better. It's He didn't play well enough. He had a million opportunities. Um, I also do wonder, though, if there is something about starting afresh, starting anew. That's a mm -hmm. Belichick draft pick. I'm going to be tangential here, but you guys know I've, I've just been watching this Patriots documentary, The Dynasty. Yeah. Oh, my God. Some of the stuff that they get into and the draconian ways of Belichick, like, that whole, like, we're drafting Jimmy Garoppolo to run off Brady thing was 100% real. He was going to Robert Kraft and showing him video of Brady failing to throw late. And, like, we need to move on now. Um, so my point is only to bring that up. A, it's amazing. And B, I think that, Jared, that Coach Mayo needs to really, really move on to, like, new stuff. And, like, mm -hmm. Mac Jones may be a good guy, maybe a potential as a player. It's a Belichick first-round draft pick. It feels like kind of we're emotionally hung over from that. Let's completely start anew. I do wonder, though, and, like, so, Peter, you go back to that 2021 draft. They're sitting there, the Patriots. They're looking for a quarterback, obviously. They get jumped by the Bears, and the Bears take Justin Fields. Mm -hmm. We never know. The Patriots have done all the work on Fields. They could have gone with Fields. We'll never know. How does that sit with you? Justin yeah. Fields to the Patriots. This draft will have a 30 for 30 on it. Look at, at that. Point because, 0 for 30. Because Trey Lance is at number three, and everyone and their mother said it. Mac Jones is the pick. The Shanahan's love him. And then in the week that led up to it, that kind of tide changed and became Trey Lance. And then Mac was sitting there at 15, and remember the walk that he had, and he looked like mm -hmm. he struck. Yeah. Right yeah. In. It was like, oh my God, Saban's guy from Alabama with mm, Belichick. Belichick. And that first year out of the gates, they go to the playoffs. It hit. And it hit. So would Justin Fields have succeeded in where Mac Jones didn't? It's a great what if. Mm -hmm. Would Trey Lance have been more exciting? Mm -hmm. Would Mac Jones have the career that Brock Purdy's having right now had he gone to San Francisco? Mm -hmm. It's a lot of different sliding doors. Meanwhile, Trevor Lawrence and Zach Wilson. Neither one of those guys have been you know, superstars in the yeah. league either. And Trevor had a better career than Zach, obviously. But I think even Trevor Lawrence hasn't lived up to his expectations. So mm -hmm. that whole draft class looks more to mm -hmm. me. You think Matt could be there to push Trevor? Of like, hey, like, Trevor, you're our guy, but mm -hmm. at the same time. I don't. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. no, I think Trevor's their guy. Yeah. And Mac was, like I said, what I say, ham sandwich? And a, and a bag of balls. Yeah. Ham sandwich yeah. and a bag of balls. Our sixth round pick, that's, yeah. that's literally nothing <laughs> for Mac Jones. Well, I think in the season of 2023, of that being like the year of the backup quarterback, I think the Jaguars actually got away with some because of all the years that Trevor Lawrence has played, he only missed his first career start this last season. Mm -hmm. He had four significant injuries that took him out of games, but it didn't really cause him to miss a game until that next week. He got hurt in week six, 12, 13, 14. And then the Jaguars yeah. had a they sputtered at the end of the season. And they had C.J. Beathard come in. They had a couple other guys in the roster. But, like, maybe they just realized, I think we kind of stole one season, but we can't Need get somebody. by again without, like, a really sustainable backup.